the idea of God or a certain source which could be in some human form or animal form or whatever, has essentially come because you not paid attention to the creation. The idea has come only because you have no explanation for the creation. But if you pay enough attention, we don't know God loves you or not, we don't know whether God is peaceful or not, we don't know whether God is compassionate or not, but if you pay attention to this flower or this leaf or a blade of grass, you can see whoever created this is brilliant, simply no question. Everywhere you see, every atom you see, it's intelligence, intelligence, intelligence. But nobody said God is intelligence. That's the biggest mistake we've made. Mm -hmm. We said all kinds of things, whatever we need, we say God is wealth because if you are poor. If you are hungry, you say God is food. If you have backache, you'll say God is health. <laughs> Everybody, whatever they're deprived of, they will make it into that. Leave all these things, just take one piece of creation, take an ant and pay attention to him. You will see it's a most brilliant creation. But we never said God is intelligence. So, this is a living intelligence, everything here, this very cosmos. In this, where do I think I'm intelligent? If you find excess to the intelligence there is, you can function in a phenomenal way. But within this bone box, if you think everything that needs to be there is in this, then all you will do is suffer your intelligence. Now you think a mad elephant is easier to handle than your mind, so you must be madder than the mad elephant. I don't know who said that, but for me, my body, my mind is never a problem. It always cooperates, because that's what it's supposed to do. My body and my mind should take instructions from me, only then it's a useful instrument. If it start doing its own things, <laughs> then it's a nuisance. And this is what is happening to most people, that their mind is the biggest nuisance in the world. They would be better off without a brain, yes. If you remove half the brain, everybody is going about struggling to be peaceful. You take away half their brain, they will sit here peacefully, very peacefully. So is that the goal I'm asking? There is a possibility, that is, if you do not harness that possibility, it becomes a major problem. And you don't know how to harness it, because you do not know whether it's a horse or an elephant or a cow or a deer, when you do not know the nature of something, how do you deal with it? Suppose, right now here there's a cup sitting here. In my mind, I think this cup is three feet in diameter. Now I will try to lift it like this. How much ever I do, this cup will not come in my hands. Now I think this cup is a serious problem. Because first of all, I have no perception what the cup is. Right now, that's all the human problem is. They have no understanding of what their mind is. They're trying to analyze the content. Content is what you picked up, isn't it? Content is what you picked up in terms of life's experiences. This content is of no use. You can distance yourself from it very effortlessly. The problem is the nature of the mind. How does it function? What is the basis of its existence? If you do not com comprehend the nature of the mind, well, it feels like a mad elephant, why not? And you believe you can handle a mad elephant? Then you've not seen one, I've seen <laughs> one. Oh, you don't want to be anywhere there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when an elephant goes mad, when it goes amok, oh, you don't want to be there anywhere in one kilometer. <laughs> and most of us.